generosity, and we are, uh, Andy and I are doing a series this month on outrageous generosity. Wow, they go to church and they always talk about money, right? Or you watch TV, I always talk about money. But this is not about money, this is not about tithes and offerings, this is not about all the things we know we should do as Christians, we should just do that automatically, that's fine. We're talking about outrageous generosity. We're talking about above and beyond that. We're talking about meeting the needs of people that God just puts on your heart to do and just bless them because he blessed you, amen? Yeah. It's like Linda going up and praying for Mary, just laying hands on her and praying for her. I mean, it was grace. She extended to grace to her, and we're going to talk about that today a little bit. So Andy talked about the needs, the provision in the Old Testament um, that God provided. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of was that one of the giving needs that you gave for is you took care of the priest. The priest didn't have a job, they didn't have any inheritance, so they were they were given uh, a part of, uh, of your your giving went to them, take care of them because they, they didn't earn a job, they didn't have a job to earn money. They, they just cared just for the people. The second uh, thing we learned last week uh, was also that the giving was for the uh, celebrations, for the time to gather together. The giving was for that to provide for that. Yeah, the third thing was for the needy. You, they gave to need. So you talk about, people say, well, we should give 10%, but to actually add that all up, the Romans will be 30%. We won't get in that today at all, okay? But Pilate is if we give faithfully to God, God provides for all those things. The two main points that he made was, outrageous giving helps us see the heart of God. When we give outrageously, when we give above ourselves, we give ex the extra point, we see God's heart. God loves to help people, amen? He loves people. He wants to see their needs being met. And we're the vehicle that can do that because God has blessed us with great wealth because of who we are, because we're his children. Amen? Well, say, you know, well I don't have great wealth, but you know, yes, you do. We In America, we have great wealth. Mm -hmm. I looked up to some statistics this morning on, on the internet, and you know, I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to speak you know, more intelligently about it, but if you live in this country and you have a job and you own a car, you're probably all, you have more wealth than probably 75% of people in the whole world. We have, you have more wealth. Than, if you're on the lowest level of income in America, whatever poverty level is in here is what, 15000 a year or something? If you make that much, you make more than 75% of the people in the world. That is crazy, right? Why has God blessed us so much? We'll talk about that a little bit more. The other thing is, our giving demonstrates our trust in God. If we give, we provide, and we help people, we're saying God's going to take care of us because His Word tells us He will. Amen? I think that's crazy. God is, well, the more you give, it seems like the more God blesses you. You ever hear that before? The more you help people, it seems like I have that extra money in my pocket to go to the Madison Club last night and have dinner with my sweetheart, right? That was crazy. Who did I spend that money on a dinner? That's, I go to McDonald's and spend five bucks. But anyway, it was just crazy. But we can do that because God has blessed us, amen? And we want to we bless others. So today we're going to talk about outrageous generosity encourages us to live with margins. All right, I'm going to show you that in Scripture, where we can live in with, with margins and know that that margin is to bless other people. Amen? So we don't have to be greedy. It's not about ourselves. God blessed you with wealth. We provided for you. And we're going to see if we would provide for people in need, that God would give you more so you can bless more people. Have you ever seen that, seen that in Scripture or heard that before? It's real. And I'm not talking about I'm going to go into your pocket. I was going to start off with everybody take their wallets out and put it on the altar. No, I'm just kidding. You know, we got to hang on to our money. It's ours. We earned it. No, you didn't earn it. God blessed you with it. Can you say amen? Amen. Yeah. God blessed amen. us. God blessed us with salvation. God, as a song we're singing, God, God, all the fear of my past is gone. All the fear of my sins is gone. All the things that I did in my life are gone because now I'm a child of God. I was once, I will show this a little bit. I was once, you know, sin in the Bible uh, represented Egypt. I was once in Egypt, but I was delivered from that. I came in now, my, I have an identity with Jesus, and he says, I'm his son, I'm his brother. I'm a, a joint heir with him. I'm blessed because God blessed him. God provided provide salvation through his son. I'm forgiven. I have hope that I never had hope before. I have a new life. I'm born again. My old life is past, and I have a new life now. I look at things so much differently than I have in the past, amen? I have hope in a new life in Jesus. 
He changed me. He made me new. And so now I look at things a lot differently. And it even includes talking about this wealth stuff. Now let's look at this, all right? I'm going to go to Leviticus chapter 23 just for a second. And just, just listen. I'm going to read this. And then I'm going to jump over to Deuteronomy chapter 24. If you got your Bibles or your iPads, turn to Deut Deuteronomy chapter 24. Or you can turn to Leviticus too. It's fine. I'm not trying to say something that's not true for you to listen to today. But God, listen to God's heart this morning. As I speak this morning, listen to God's heart about this wealth stuff and this generous giving, all right? It's not about me, but it's God's heart. And I was praying this morning, God, don't let me come across as I present this morning. I want God's heart to come across. I want you to hear how God loves people and wants to bless them, and he wants to bless you, amen? So he provided in Deuteronomy, he told that this was for the children of Israel. In Le Leviticus chapter 23, talks about all the different feasts and celebrations and how people are supposed to celebrate and do things. But in Leviticus, Leviticus uh, number 22 says this, When you reap the harvest of your land, so the children of Israel owned land, and they were farmers, and they farmed, and they had land. Do not reap to the very <coughs> edges of your field, or gather the gleaning of, your, of the, your harvest. Leave them for the poor and the aliens, Because and this is why, because I am the Lord your God. So God tells them in Leviticus, if you have land, you're supposed to harvest the land all the way up to the edge, but leave some for people to glean from. Gleaning means that if you're poor or if you're an alien, you can go to that farmer's field, ask permission, and go in there, and you would be able to gather that food or that grain, wheat, barley, whatever it was, for yourself. But you just have to ask for permission, right? And God is telling the landowner here, to harvest all that you need to harvest, but leave uh, a portion at on the edges. Amen? So uh, my sermon title today is that we are going to give generously, um, uh, outrageous giving, uh, so we can live with a margin. So the margin around the field so that the poor could come, the alien that couldn't own land, could come and gather food for themselves and for their family. And this is why, and I want you to remember this, because I am the Lord your God. So God gave some direction, but all he said is, I'm God, do what I say. No, I'm God, I know the big picture. I'm God, I know everything that you have, farmer guy. I know that you own this land, and, and I want you to, to extend some grace to some people that might have need, so they can have what they need to provide for themselves. Amen? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 24. And we look, look at uh, verse 19. I'm, I'm excited about this. Is that okay? I'll calm down a little bit. But I, I think it's the hardest thing to talk about is our wealth. But God has provided for us, and he's going to give us more if we just obey him. When, okay, verse 19. We'll start with verse 19. When you are harvesting in your fields and you overlook a sheep, do not go back and get it. Anybody know what a sheep is? So when they, they're gathering grains, they're doing it in bundles, and they take a hand sickle, and they would cut the, the sheaf, and they wrap it up, and they, that's how they harvest it. So if something fell on the ground, he said, just leave it there. All right? Leave it for the alien, the fatherless, and the widow, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all the works of your hand. Who's he going to bless when you do this? He's going to bless you because you're taking care of people. Amen. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. It says, when you when you beat the uh, uh, when you uh, beat the olives from your trees, because they would shake olives, they shake a tree to get the olives out of it. Do not go over the branches a second time. Leave the remains for the aliens, the fatherless, and the widows. When you harvest the grapes in your wine field uh, vineyard, do not go over the vines again. Leave what remains for the aliens, the fatherless, and the widow. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt. This is why I command you to do this. So God is telling the farmer and the, the person that runs the uh, olive grove, and all he says, when you're harvesting, make sure you leave some for those that are needy. So he tells us about who they are, right? The aliens, the people that didn't own land because they, they needed this how they provided for themselves. The fatherless, the children, and the fathers weren't there to be able to provide for them, and the widows. It says this, this is why we should do this. Because he says, remember, look at verse 22. Why should they leave this? Why? I know practically you can see 
Uh, most of us are intelligent enough in this room to know, hey, there's needy people, God provided for them. And this is how he provided for them. Look why he said we should do this. This is what blew me away a little bit as I was studying. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt. That is why I command you to do this. Remember when you were slaves in Egypt, what happened? Remember the children of Israel went down to Egypt. They had uh, a time of great harvest and prosperity, but then the king changed and then they were in slavery. And they lost everything they owned. And they, they, they worked for nothing. And you know the story of Moses, something to do. And, and so we know that they, they were in slavery. They lost everything. And God is saying, remember that. Remember that you had nothing. Remember that you were slaves. Remember that you lost all that you, all your identity. You lost everything. I want to provide for, for those that feel the same way. I'm going to give them a portion of what I blessed you with. Amen? Come on, say amen, because you know that's good. You know that's good. I can see, I can see, because what my, what is God telling me this morning? What does this mean? I don't, I mean, I'm students. I don't have anything, right? What, what does it mean? Well, someday you're going to have a degree. Someday you're going to get a great job. God's going to bless you, and you're going to have abundance, and God's going to show you what to do with that. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he says, remember that. I'm thinking, so I, I apply this to myself. I said, what, when the Bible refers to sin, it kind of always refers to Egypt. When I was in my old life, I was a slave to all the sins that I was involved in. And then when I became a believer, I was no longer being a slave to that sin anymore. I was free. And God blessed me when I was free. I want, and God provided for me. And so he says, remember that. Don't forget what you, I think for us that are, that have, you know, we have things, we have means now. We have, God's blessed us. We're, we're given in tithes. We're given in offering to the church. Great. That's awesome. And then we should do all those things. But God's saying more. I think he's telling us that there's more. He wants us to be outrageous and happy and hilarious givers. Smile. Come on. It's not that bad. God wants you to be, wouldn't it be great if you had an uh, uh, unendless amount of wealth that you could just give to every poor person that you met? Every needy person. We drove past a guy on the street yet last night as we were coming home. I said, see that guy over there? I was, if I had my money in my car, I would stop and give him money. I just had my debit cards. So that's why I carry cash with me. I like carrying cash with me. Well, it's kind of one of the things when I carry it, I just, I wind up giving it away and then I have to get more, right? Is that okay? Is, I do. So I have like, a, I, I, if I have $100 in my pocket, I usually have 20s, and I, I love giving away or buying groceries for somebody in a grocery store or just doing that, just blessing people. I don't know, I get happy when it happens, amen? I, I, it's, I, I'm joyful, and, and, and when it happens, God is able to use me to bless another person because God blessed me with the salvation that I didn't deserve. And that person probably doesn't deserve the $20 or the $15 or the $100. They, but it doesn't matter. That's the grace of being a baby. Amen? I received grace like you received grace the day I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. He wiped all my sins away. I'm no longer that person I was in Egypt. I'm now a new person. I'm, I'm in a promised land right now. Amen? I'm living in a different identity. I have a father that loves me. I didn't know that before. I have a a, a, a brother that died on a cross for me that shed his blood for me so I could be totally cleansed from my past. I'm like, praise God, amen? And I live in that joy, and I want to spread that joy around, amen? I want people to be blessed beyond measure, and I, I believe the Holy Spirit will lead us in that. And this is why we do it. We do it because God is, not only do we provide it for the poor, because God said we should, I, I see that in Leviticus, we should because God said, provide a margin so people could be provided for. But then also, here we see that we do it because remember what happened to us. Remember where we came from. Remember the, the stuff we lived in. The muck, the miry, the brick making, the, 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 the abuse by the slave masters, the devil that would just accuse us of all sorts of stuff. We had no hope. We were hopeless, but now we have hope. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We have so much hope and love. And God has blessed you and me to do more than we could ever think and imagine <coughs> in our lives for His kingdom. And I just know that, I don't know about you, but 
my wealth is like the hardest thing to give up. Amen? I mean, how many struggle with like, hey, you know, Kevin, how many learning, like, don't raise your hand. Man. But I, when I first learned to talk, when I never, I never knew the word before I went to church. I never, never heard about tithing or giving or any of that stuff. And then I learned about it. And all of a sudden I'm like, okay, well, you know, when you make $450 a month, writing a $40.80 check was a big deal. Right? Because that's what I made when I was in the Marine Corps when we were married. That's what we, our first, that's what we made. That's a monthly paycheck. How many's got more than that a month now? That's what we made. We made four dollars and and four hundred and what it was forty dollars of our check plus a few few pennies because that's what we were supposed to do, and we learned why. But in that, in our faithfulness and in our maybe just in our um, learning about God and His love, when we begin to do that, then all of a sudden blessings came. So then Tina got a job. Then I got a promotion. And things just started happening. And as we did it, we didn't go, look what we did. And this is what we have to learn and, and continue to do. It's not what we have accomplished. Look what God bless us with. Because when we do that, when we re receive that, his blessings, we're able to give it away a little more freely. Amen? Look what I've done. Look what I accomplished. No, look what God's blessed you with. Look how he, you've earned those degrees. You've earned that wonderful job. You did all those things, but God blessed you with that. And then we have a different attitude about it. God has taken us out of Egypt, out of our old thinking, into a different thinking. Amen? And so when, they, when you're in a corporate world and everybody wants to step on you to get above them, well, I just say, like, here, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, you know, I'll bless you. You don't deserve to be promoted above me, but I, I'll step aside for a moment. You know what happens? Every time... I got promoted above them, those people. I don't know how it works. It just worked that way. Amen? I'll cry when I get promoted. God, you did it again. God, you did it again. Every time we look at our, um, we're going to talk about this program in a little bit, living in the margins, living, uh, living uh, or providing for margins in your life so you can bless others. And we're going to talk about it a little bit. Dion's going to come and show a little video and stuff like that. But God wants to bless us in a mighty way. Providing in the, the, providing for people in the margin is like allowing others to allowing others to glean from your property or take from you or give away. It's like almost a fruit of holiness. You're like giving away God's love. You're giving away blessings. You're giving away so much. Let's do. Let's, if you will, let's turn to Second um, Corinthians chapter eight. generosity. And let's look at verse 7. This whole section is about a church that uh, Macedonia that, that decided to give to the people in Jerusalem that needed it. And verse 7 says, But just as you excelled in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in your love for us, see that you excel in the grace of giving. Would you circle that or highlight that in your phone? In the grace of giving. And this is this is amazing. How many receive grace for the forgiveness of your sin? You didn't deserve forgiveness. You didn't deserve it. You didn't you were you were guilty because of your sin. The penalty for that sin was death. But Jesus provided through the cross that our that the blood was shed for us so we could be forgiven. So he extended to us grace. We didn't deserve that grace, but he gave it to us. Here, this word is so amazing. As Paul writes this to the church of Macedonia, he says, excel in the grace of giving. So what does that mean when we break it down a little bit? What does that mean? How do we excel in the grace of giving? Well, first of all, we excel in the fact that the person that you're giving to might not deserve it, but you do it anyway. Because God gave you a blessing, right? And you're going to bless others. Give to them, because it, you can't justify. When the Holy Spirit leads you to give, you give, and all of a sudden, you're, you can't say, oh, does that person doesn't deserve that $20? Like, um, I was at, who's, uh, you ever been to Mocha's? The little coffee shop on, on, um, University. on University Avenue? Have you been there? I drive there this past, so on the way to church is my, that's my pit stop, because on the way to church in the morning, I can stop at Mocha's, drive through. I really like them, because they're really friendly. So you go to, you know, you go through a Starbucks, you talk into a little box, and give you what you want, thank you, and you're on the pay and on your way, right? Well, at Mocha's, you have like a conversation. 
because they don't have a little box. You talk to the person. It's kind of fun, so you get to know them. Well, one, I, uh, I drive Uber also, like Andy does every once in a while. I haven't driven for a while, but uh, the last time I drove, one day, two weeks ago, I had $15 in tips. Each person gave me $5. I must have had a really good story that day or whatever. They just like me, but you know, you take give me a dollar if you ever get a tip, because Uber doesn't, uh, basically, you don't have to tip with Uber, so you, know, you, don't, I don't, you don't expect one. But when you get one, it's kind of cool. So anyway, I got 15 bucks. And I, I was, this guy was really friendly, and I, I think he's a musician, and you know we need some musicians here. So I'm, I'm like, you know, I want to get to know this guy, because maybe he's a guitar player, and we need a guitar player. So if you got any musical talent, see Tina, because we can use you and our worship team. But anyway, I, I wanted to get to know, I have a purpose, but, you know, that's probably a bad way to start this, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm writing, I'm telling you a story, I say I wrote down Mocha right here. So, uh, I tell you a story, but now I'm telling the story, and I'm thinking, wow, I had, did have some agenda I, uh, in, in my mind, but I haven't approached him yet, so maybe I'm still good. But anyway, so the, the Holy Spirit, I was going to give him a tip because I wanted to give him a tip because you bless him, right? And sometimes you bless him, even though it's just a, a $2.95 cup, $2 co cup of coffee, you know, give him five bucks, they think you appreciate it, right? So the Holy Spirit said, give, I, I looked in my wallet, I had no dollars in my wallet, so the Holy Spirit said, you have $15 in your asterisk thing, whatever thing. They're not asterisk. Space in my car that holds money because that's where I put it. Anyway, uh, so I took the fifteen dollars and I gave it to him. And he's as he's handing back my credit card or my debit card, and he goes, "Oh, you already paid." I said, "I know. This is a tip for you." And uh, he looked at it and goes, "Wow, like really?" And I go, "Yeah, because I just want to bless you. God bless me. So I just want to bless you." Just that little conversation, like Linda, just that little conversation, just open up the door, right? Oh. And of course, I drive away, you know, and I heard him telling the guy, did you know what that guy just did? I think, yeah, Lord. So I'm going to win the whole, everybody who works at Mocha is going to come to know Jesus, all right? That's my prayer every morning, you know, I go there. But anyway, we, I, they didn't, he didn't deserve, my point was, that he didn't deserve a $15 tip. But I did it because I wanted to lead them to Jesus. I want them to see, come to Jesus. I want them to know Jesus, the Lord, Savior. And plus, we maybe need a guitar player, so that's the extra benefit out of the whole thing, all right? <laughs> But praise, praise the Lord. But uh, it's just one of those things that you just bless. So every time, I, I, don't, I don't know if you expect it, but last time I went through, he didn't, he didn't reach out his hand, like, give me $15. But, you know, he was like, hey, this guy, you know, he remembers me from last time. So uh, this week, I'm going to have a conversation with them. Go inside, order my coffee, and see if you can sit down and have a conversation uh, about life and see what God will do. Amen. So you pray for me that God will use me in that way. The point is that God wants us to live with, with margins. And sometimes we don't know how to do that. How do we live with extra? Do you know people have a budget for your ear? I know it's a bad word to say, but you you know what a budget is? Everybody knows shake your head, yeah? Um, and we, we didn't live on a budget because we just like we didn't have a budget. We like bought groceries, paid the rent, and tied. That's what we did. But anyway, we learned after a while that living on a budget really is profitable because you actually take and put all your money in a certain place. And when you put it in a certain place, you can put a place called margins or offerings or giving, and then you can fill that up. And as the Holy Spirit leads you, you can just take that amount of money and give it to people that have need. I mean, besides your tithes and offerings, we're not talking about tithes and offerings, we're not talking about supporting the ministry and all that stuff. We're just talking about putting something, being intentional about blessing other people that may come across your path. Amen? A neighbor, a loved one. Uh, what, whatever you, I would just tell you, just whatever the Holy, whoever the Holy Spirit tells you to lead, lead and bless, then do that. But be ready to do that. So this is um, Dion's gonna. You got this, Dion? Is it already loaded the, the video? Yep. Yep. You guys ready? So we're gonna come up. Dion's gonna explain something that, that him and Ashley have been doing for years, and it's this program called YNAB. It's called You Need a Budget, and I wanted to uh, provide just a uh, drop a seed in your spirit about it. And then we're going to have a class on a Saturday and actually teach on how to set up a budget if you're not used to that. Amen? So, it, it, and so Tina and I have, a, um, well, I'll explain this afterwards. The, and come on and share a little bit about uh, what you guys have been doing and then about the church, too, because church, we use this, too. The church uses this now. So we use uh, QuickBooks as a bookkeeping program, but we use this as... Uh, our budgeting program. So we know when we need to buy light bulbs for the sanctuary because we had a light go out today 
So I had I spent uh, thirty or forty dollars on light bulbs two weeks ago, but I had money in the maintenance budget so I could do it, amen. And I didn't have to worry about it, and it was spent it was spent for that purpose. So anyway, um, living on a margin, you need to be able to put money aside um, to help you be an outrageous giver, amen. So let's listen to this in, in for a second. Just an introductory thing, two minutes long, right? Okay, you know the story. You need cash for the movies, so you check your account balance. You think through the bills that are due soon and match them up to Thursday's paycheck. Feels a little tight, but whatever, it'll be fine. But then a few curveballs catch you off guard. How could you have ever prepared for this? Now you're really starting to sweat. But what happens if you have a medical emergency or other crisis? Well, guess what? You need a budget. Yeah, you know that. Everyone knows that. Maybe you've even tried it before. Freezing the credit cards, penny pinching, the envelope system, taking weeks to tag and categorize 12 months of transaction history. 10 points for being thorough, but did it change anything? An effective budget is about the present and the future, not the past. You need a budget, or why not, for busy people, is an entirely new way to approach this very old problem. And it works. It all boils down to four rules that help you make simple changes today. First, give every incoming dollar a job so you aren't tempted to spend them on something outside the plan. Rule number two, plan for those bigger, less frequent expenses. Splitting them into monthly chunks ensures the cash is there. Uh, yeah, so my wife and I, I think we've been using this for about three and a half years. Actually, they have a new version now. Before, we were using uh, Excel spreadsheet, and um, I don't know how many people have used Excel spreadsheet to uh, try to keep a budget. Uh, it makes it seem like you have so much extra money, but you really don't uh, at the end when you do the formulas, things like that. So my wife came to me, she, she found this uh, online, and she's like, hey, you know, let's try this, this seems really good. And me being the, the male, I'm like, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to try something new, especially if you got to pay for it, but I think it was a one-time fee of $60 at the moment. That was a one-time uh, month, a yearly fee of $50 now because uh, they, they changed the thing around. Um, but my wife was like, well, let's let's try this. Uh, for 34 days, you get it for free. So I was like, okay, let's try it. Uh, so then so then when I uh, when we when we started using the budget, basically what happened is uh, rule number one, the, 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 the two important rules to us was rule number one and rule number four. So rule number one is that every dollar has a, has a, has a place. Uh, that meaning, say you get paid uh, bi-weekly every two weeks, say $1,000. Um, with the Excel spreadsheet, you would put in $1,000 and then you would go in and put in the bills, but then at the bottom it would say this is what you have left. So that money didn't have a, a placeholder. So in right now, what happens is you put the money in there, it'll say, okay, you have $1,000 to be budgeted and you have bills and different things like that. So basically what happens is you take every dollar amount that's being budgeted and you put it into a spot. So once you pay all your bills and everything left, most of the time, I want to say about 90% of the time, you know, as long as you're not in severe debt when you owe a lot of people, you, you will have a lot of, you have money left over. So then with that, you can take that money and um, what we would usually do is that we'll see like, hey, you know, if somebody in the family that may need help or whatever like that, like my brother-in-law, he needs groceries for college or whatever because he, he, he doesn't make it We'll, we'll send them a, a hundred and something dollars worth of groceries in the care packages, you know, up to them. And then, uh, when we, then when you get paid the following week, if if you follow this uh, step one with every every um, every dollar needs a, a placeholder, after you've paid your bills with maybe your first week's uh, of pay, then you get paid the second time of the month, we have even more money left. Uh, so usually what we do is we have it categorized tithes, offering, um, other expenses, and then we have like our bills in one, and then at the bottom we have like savings, and we have goals and different things like that. So then, when next month comes, rule number four comes into place a lot because now what happens is you have all your money budgeted. So basically, when you move to the next month, you're actually using last month's money to pay for things for 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 the up and coming month. So basically, you're using past money to pay for things that's coming in the future. And the software is really cool because even here at the church. Um, when, when we were doing the, the budget and stuff before, we would just use QuickBooks and you would put the money in there and then it would come out and you'll be like, okay, well, you know, where's all this money going? We, we don't really know. So then once we started using YNAB, I want to say in October of last year, 
we were actually able to see like, okay, well, we're paying all these bills right here. We have we have this left over. So what that helps us to do to be more uh, generous givers is that, say, a missionary or someone comes in, or, you know, comes and minister the word, or we want to help out uh, other missionaries and or other families. We have a benevolence fund, or if we want to pick someone other missionaries up to actually support them throughout the year to make their uh, commitment to continue to give to them. And why that will show like, okay, we have this amount of money left over now. And it's like, oh, well, I guess we can really do this instead of like just guessing. So when someone comes in, you want to, and the Lord lady, like, hey, you, you give this guy something, instead of like, okay, well, we, we don't really know what we're giving, we, we can give you this, we can say, oh, well, actually, we really can give you this, you know, so it actually helps you to be able to to give more. Um, so me and my wife, we, we try to practice that. So beyond, uh, as Pastor said, your tithe one here at the church, but also just, you know, helping people. Um, and on that note, I just have a quick testimony to share. This just happened yesterday. So me and my buddy, uh, one of my best friends from back home, uh, you know, he's he's working, he's in a you know tough situation, and um, you know we play video games or we do things together and stuff. So I'm like, hey man, let's let's do this, let's 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 do this together. You know, you know, can you can you can you buy this? And he's like, well, not not really. I said, like, okay, that's fine. I'll I'll just transfer you the money to your account. And he said, man, I I must be doing something wrong if if you could just transfer me like you know fifty bucks just like that. And I, and I texted him back, I said, well, you know, um, you know, last week Andy pre preached a message on, um, you know, being generous and, and just being able to give. And I told him, I was like, uh, during that message, the Lord told me a certain amount of money to give, but I'm married. So I told him, I, I asked my wife first, like, hey, you know, do you, you know, do you think we need to give a little bit extra? So she went and explained some things. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe that was just for me. So I went in the back and I just <coughs> swiped my card. And before I swiped my card, I said, Lord, I, I trust you. You know, with this, you know, I'll, I'll swipe the car and this is what you told me to give. So I told my, my buddy that I was like, yeah, I'm just trying to trust God with my uh, my finances because it's so hard, you know, growing up, you know, may not have much. But now when you, when you have it, you're trying to hold on to it. Like, okay, I need to save this money. Uh, you know, I really can't afford to give out so much because I might be with, with me. But if, if I trust God and what he's saying, then I'm never going to be without me because he's always going to take care of me. Amen. So I just need to trust, trust him. So, like, this tool that we're using... This gives you wisdom on how to budget your money, but at the end of the day, it's our heart. Like we have to be willing to listen and, and be led by the Spirit. To, That's right. Hey, hey, Lord told me to give. Let let me give, but let me not question it. And also on the flip side of that, it's not even though God says in His Word that He's going to provide for us. Let's not just give because we know He's going to get back to us, but let's give because we want to be obedient to what He's telling us to do to bless someone else. Amen. Amen. So how long, how long did it take you when you started this budget program using my now, you and Ashley back back then, how long did it take you to kind of get on track like, okay, you, you saw the benefits of it? Well, I know it's not instant, like the first month, all of a sudden, I got all this extra money because it's not really works that way. Well, I think for us, it was, it was I think it was almost instant though. Okay. Because, um, you know, God had blessed us with the careers that we have, so it's right. like we kind of, the income that we have, we were able to get the income. So when we see it, it's like, oh my goodness, like we really do have like this much money left over. Like, you know, after you pay all the bills, college loans, and all that stuff, it's like, oh, we actually do have this. So it's like, well, what is the, what, what should we do with this? So it's like, okay, you put some of the savings for things that may come up, and then you also try to see what else we can, you know, help someone else out. Yeah. So in the church, and I would DM alluded to this, so in the church, every penny is counted for, so you know, you know, it's not there, everything's counted for. But it's, it's like, where did, it was, how do we, can we view that and see it so we have a, a better report to know what we're spending our money on? So when we switch over to YMAP, how long did it take us and what, to see the benefit of that here? Because we, of course, our income wasn't much at the end, actually, so we, it took a little bit longer. It's, so yeah, it took, October's when we started, yeah. and when did we see the benefit? Like, when did we see we, the we see, We've seen the benefits, we started seeing huge benefits, probably want to say, like, the end of last year, December, and then this year, January. Yeah. That was a big switch for us. So what happened is we were we, we put um, it's it's kind of like an envelope system, but it's all on a computer. It's all and so Tina and I have it. It's on, it's on her phone and my phone. So when we go to store, we can we can put every transaction in. So you don't have to stress at the end of the month trying to put all the transactions back in your budget because you're off track. We just put the transactions in right there. So and the church is a little different because we, we go through the checkbook and we go through um, uh, authorization is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But what we did in the church, we said because they were using it, Andy and Rachel are using it. Tina and I started using it. We we immediately <coughs> probably in the second month when we actually saw the big difference. Like wow, 
We were because we had a budget. Listen, this is what happened to us. When we didn't have a budget, we go, hey, it's, let's go out to dinner, <laughs> right? So Tina and I, because we don't have anybody at home, we just go out to dinner. We're like three, four times a week we go out to dinner. It was great, you know. But we're spending a lot of money because now we're tracking every transaction. So the next month we had a budget. We go, well, I didn't want to go out to dinner because I want, I knew that thirty or forty dollars was going into the savings then instead of going into the entertainment. So it had a place. So now I'm saving for things, uh, long term things that we want to do. Uh, our trip to North Carolina next month is all that's paid for. We have um, extra spending money. We the trip paid for, and we have extra spending money already set aside because we've been budgeting it for it uh, for a while now. So it's really nice. So now we're going to go on our trip. It's going to be like no credit card debt, no nothing. It's paid for. Uh, for the church, same way. So we we uh, as hopefully next Sunday we'll see two beautiful TVs up on this, up there for our, for our videos and for our words. And they're already paid for. They're sitting in my office. Andy. Uh, being a great budgeter and seeker of values, valuable things, or what do you saw, uh, cheap things. I was able to cheap, but I was, uh, I was looking for a better word. But anyway, we had, uh, he bought um, 70 inch TVs for the price of a 60 inch TV. Um, it was like $10 difference, right? So, anyway, so we'll have that and we'll have to put that, hopefully, we'll have it all up and running, running next week. Because we had, were able to budget for it and we had that extra money, we could do that. And it was all, it's all paid for, it's not on the credit card, praise the Lord, right? Even if you accidentally overspend, like, Next month you'll see a negative for that. The negatives carry over. So it's like if you if you went over hundred dollars in entertainment, because they're gonna like we to try to do entertainment. If you go over in that, you can take from another another category and put it in for that month. But next month when it comes in, so that thousand dollars you get next month because it was red, it'll say nine hundred instead of a thousand because it'll automatically do it. So you don't have to guess. It's just like oh, I, okay, yeah, over budget. It's okay. So it's gonna take it and you have to put that money in there. So thank you, Dion. I appreciate that. I just want to take a minute because living in the mark, living. Graciously living uh, generos with generosity, you have to pr plan for it. And so, since we've been able to do this, we've been able to do a lot more. Uh, as a church family, we'll be able to bless more people. As individuals, we'll be able to bless more people. So, if you're interested in this program and you want to learn about it, you can go online and, and download it yourself. It's pretty self explanatory and have videos to show you how to do it and explain it. So, it's really, really good program. But uh, if not, if you'd like to have a class and how to do it, Dion and Ashley are going to help us with a class. We'll just see how many people want to do it, and we'll just come here on a Saturday morning, and we'll go through everything and help you set it up. And it's very flexible. So you start, for our church uh, budget, what we did is we uh, actually have a category for savings now, which we had had for years. So all the money that we don't use for maintenance and salaries and uh, cleaning the carpet and buying whatever, uh, all that stuff that we have to do, um, then that money goes into savings. And so we can see that growing and growing and growing now, which we didn't have before, which is just a blessing. So the stress of the budget for me is like, I don't even worry about it anymore. Deanna will text me, this is the offering for Sunday. Oh yeah, praise the Lord, great, thank you Jesus. And then all the rest, all the money, he's putting in categories. So I don't have to worry about doing that. He's already doing it. So I just look at the checks, if we write a check. It's just so much stress off of us as a church family and off of us as individuals. And we want you to have the same thing because then, the joy of the receiving the money is not like, oh my God, I wonder how I'm gonna pay my bills. You already know it's gonna be paid for. And then when the Holy Spirit says to you, Give that person fifteen dollars. You don't have to start worrying about that and thinking about yourself. You're just giving it because it's the it's on the margin that you provided for. And we had started just the last month giving, having a uh, we have our we have um, so like Dion said we have ties, we have offerings in our budget line, and we have missions in our budget our, our budget line. But also now we have a new category we just started a little while ago called just giving. So when we want to give away a significant amount of money, we already we already have it in there. So when the Holy Spirit says do it, then we just do it. Amen. So praise the Lord. So let's what, one last scripture. Let's um, um, look. Turn to Second Corinthians chapter nine, and I'm going to end with this. And I want you to just open up your hearts and receive Hallelujah. What God wants you to do uh, to uh, to to change. A lot of this is just. Um, I like how the young said that. You know, it's our, it's just our heart change. It's like it's not about me. It's not about what I have, what what I'm giving up. It's that the Father's heart is to love everyone, and through our generosity and through uh, through uh, this this avenue, we can open up doors to share Christ's love with the world around us. It's so. It's just an ad. It's one more thing that God has given us a uh, a way to. 
love others. So let's look at this. It's called Sowing Generously, and we opened up, I think Andy opened up with this last week, but I just want to close with it this week. It says, remember this, whenever you sow uh, sparingly, you will also reap sparingly. And what, when whoever sows generously will also reap generously. And it's talking about giving. It's talking about your finances. So if you, you hang on to your money, you're not going to get a lot of return. You give it away, you get a lot of return. Each man should give. And this is important. This is this verse right here. We just want to read over this verse. It's really important. Each one, each, each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly, under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Everybody say a cheerful giver. Cheerful. And when you translate this out in the Greek, it says hilarious giver. A, a happy giver, right? This is what it means, cheerful giver. We're going to give because we're, we, it's a joy for me to give. It never used to be, but when I realize that all of this that I have is not mine, it's God's, God's blessed me with it, so I can give happily and not worry about writing out that tie check or giving to somebody when God leads us because you look at all your needs, but God said he would provide all your needs according to his riches and glory. Think about that. He's going to provide your needs. You just ask him and believe. It, it's kind of like that simple. I mean, it just seems like so elementary, doesn't it? Ask God and he'll give you whatever you need. And that's what the word of God says. Amen. So you have to believe the word of God. The word of God said he'll provide for you. So then when I pray, I say, God, you know, this is, don't be afraid to ask God for what you need. Like, you know, you have college debt or hopefully you will end college with no debt, but whatever happens, God help me uh, uh, with this, with this finances. If this is a tool that Dion shared that I can use to help me get out of debt, great, praise the Lord. So knowledge gives you power in one sense. So you have a knowledge how to deal with this. But God will ultimately provide it because I trust you, God, with everything that I need. And what happens, I don't know about you, but this would happen. It seems like my needs get smaller when I kind of have the same heart of God. I don't have the need thing. I need a fishing boat. No, I don't need a fishing boat. I'll get one when I get to heaven. Right? I need a big house because my wife loves to cook and I need a big kitchen with a big island and all the pots and pans and everything you she no, you know, you know what? Tina's heart is like mine. We'll just be we'll be content and satisfied with what we have. That way I can do more for the kingdom of God, right? I don't need to live in my you guys been to my house, I don't need to live in it. I need to, I I should be have a huge mansion. <laughs> no, I don't need that. We decided we don't need that. So we'll be content what we have, we'll entertain, we'll love people there, we'll cook, she'll cook in the kitchen, and the amazing things come out of there anyway. So everybody's satisfied and loved. So we just, our heart changes, because we want the heart of God. We want to love people like God. So look what it says, for, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound in you, so that all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So here, is this, we miss this. Okay, I'm giving to God, I'm loving people, I'm doing these things, but why would we do it? Because we are bound in every good work. There's some good work for us to do. So we're giving out, out of our extra, or the part that we provided is we're living with a margin, and God's saying bless people, and God says, hey, listen, just the good work. To me, uh, I read this, you can read this. What is the good work? What is the good work? The good work is going to help your neighbor. And loving on her, and over the years, loving on her, and she trusts you, and now there's an open door that you can just walk through, and maybe there's many times the Holy Spirit told you to do it, but finally you listen this time, praise the Lord, and Mary goes, nobody's ever done, how many times, I've heard that millions of times, Glenn, I've heard that so many times, nobody ever loved on me, nobody prayed for me, nobody ever did that for me, and I just pour God's love into her, amen, and who, who knows, bless her, with whatever, dear wealth, who knows what God's going to do next, you know, hopefully she'll come to know Jesus. As our Lord said, and it's written, He uh, has scattered abroad His gifts to the poor, His righteousness endures forever. Now He has supplied seed to the sower and bread for food, will also supply and increase in your store of seeds and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. God's going to give you more margin to live on. He's going to bless you and give you more, more things to be able to help the poor and help the needy and help the widow and help the fatherless. And that's why we want to help Karen. Now. That's why we want to bring those people in here on Easter Sunday and just pour into them uh, a significant amount of money that they'll be blessed with. Amen? So whatever God tells you to do, do that now. Prepare now. Pray, God, what can I do to bless these people? Because these ladies that come are poor. 
Everything that they have, when they come to that place, they don't pay for a penny. They don't pay for nothing. All the medical care they get, all the counseling they get, all the classes they go through, nothing. They, they invite the husband or the boyfriend in and they, they bless them and they, they help encourage them to be part of the baby's life. And then they provide apartment for them. Laundry with, with uh, laundry uh, care and, and everything you could need, plus dinner every night and breakfast and lunch. They provide all that for free. It's an amazing program. I just want to encourage you, pray about the margin. Let God say, God, what is this? Not besides my tithes, besides the offerings I give to support the church, what do you want me to give beyond that, Lord? And whatever God tells you to do, do it. Let me encourage you to do it. God, just like I said, I am God in Deuteronomy and Leviticus. I am God. This is good. Remember where you came from and remember what you didn't have. Think about being a, a poor young lady who had no hope, and she goes to CareNet, and she gets an altar style to, re required by law free. Get some great love. Walk in that place, and uh, we stopped there on Friday, right? We, uh, we stopped on Friday to talk to Julie. Go and talk to Julie. You, if you, you just feel love walking in the place. It's just so much love. I mean, they, they, don't, they don't judge anybody. They don't care about what happened. They just want to take care of you and your baby. It's amazing amazing thing just like God said you take care of you that they're taking care of those ladies and providing for them and not don't worry about anything don't worry about what you're going to eat where you're going to sleep don't worry about nothing we'll take care of you because we love you because God loves you what a message amen what a message and I think we as a, as a church we're a family and we've provided for needs in our church family since we've been here it's great and God's blessed us now it's time to serve each other and serve our community. That's what I think. And then and part of that is being a missionary. Maybe God will, will put on your heart to go help them. They'll, they'll set up a table on Easter Sunday. You get to read all about them and have some brochures. But maybe you can spend some time over there, volunteer some time, doing some maintenance work, uh, talking to the ladies, taking care of the babies. You know, there's a lot of things that they need there. They can volunteer help too. Um, they don't need, I like the word volunteer because we're going to have a volunteer meeting after service for our nursery and children's worker. But I really, I don't know how to say it differently. Like, I, God's really looking for servants. Like, we're going to serve our children in the nursery. We're going to serve our children. We're going we're gonna to serve each other. It's a hard thing to do to serve one another, isn't it? Like, because we want to be served. When you come to church, you don't come to serve, you come to be served. <laughs> I want something, Pastor, give me something, right? I want something from you. But, you know, what if we change it around and we just serve one another and love each other, encourage each other, and man, encourage, and then that just spreads out into the community. That's what we're trying to do. Andy and I are really, we really feel like we should help something in the community that needs our help, and that's why we, we, we chose, we, we as a church have been supporting them for, what, two years now? We just give $50 a month, but, you know, maybe after that, after this Easter Sunday, we can increase to 100 or 200 or what, I don't know. Something crazy, you know, that we can just help those people. Living in, living, um, living in an air in a way that we outrageously, just graciously pour into somebody's life so they can see God's love through you and through me and through our church and through our community. Man, that's what God wants to do. I want to challenge you this morning to just examine your heart. Can you see in your own life where you can have some marginal things that you can just give away for the kingdom of God? And, and I, I can be totally honest with you. It's not really about your time. It's not about your skills giving those away. It's not, that's not what it says, even though that's important. Like if you're an electrician, you can go help do something like that. Or if you're a computer guy, you can go help fix your computers. I mean, that's all good stuff. But this is really talking about money. Isn't it? Isn't that? I mean, I know some pastors kind of make it, wash it over, like, oh, if you have like a special skill, you can go. Help. No, that's that's even extra beyond that. This is just talking about money, our wealth, what you have, your finances. This is what it's about. Well, I don't have a lot, Pastor. I know, but what you have is a lot when you think about what you had before you were a believer and all the struggles you were in and all the life things that were horrible. And some of you today can't even imagine how you can be a gracious giver, but God's going to do that for you and bless you if we just listen to what the Word of God says here and know that He's going to provide all your needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen? Praise God. I love you guys. And I, I'm thinking, we're going to teach on this series because we want, we think, 
We want people to be happy when they give. They want to be joyful. When you go back there and swipe your card or put money in the box, man, just do a happy dance. Say, God, I, I can't believe I can do this today. Praise the Lord, right? And then watch and see how the Holy Spirit will lead you to touch a life through your wealth or His kingdom. Amen? So provide a margin. Just like God provided for the children of Israel, they had the land, they had a margin of things that they provided for the poor and the widow and the fatherless. Let's do the same. Let's, in our own personal finances, in the finances of our church, we do the same thing now. We're having an edge. We have this margin that we have that now we can bless other people. And we don't bless because look what I've done. Jesus warned us about that. Let me tell you this. Jesus warned Don't go around saying, look what we've done, look what we've done. Jesus warned it. No, just do it in secret. Go bless people. We don't have to know about it unless God you, something miraculous happens, you know, you go bless people. So isn't that something? A church is telling you to take your money outside the church. <laughs> have you ever heard that before? That's like craziness, right? We want you to take what you have and bless a family next door. Bless somebody on the highway. Find out about a mom or a dad or even somebody in our church that needs a blessing. Bless them, amen? You don't even have to get credit. As a matter of fact, even, if you don't want it, it won't even go on your tax record. It was just do it because God, you're doing it for the kingdom. You're having a heart. God, change. This is our prayer today. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Hallelujah. Father, I love you. I thank you for everyone that's here this morning. I thank you, God, that, oh, Lord, we want to be a happy and cheerful giver, God. We want to be able to provide a budget where we can just be able to have a margin where we can give God. <coughs> I want us to have a heart like you do for all the widows and all the needy and all the poor that's around. Father God, you've given us well so, you, so we can help them. That's why we have what we have. <coughs> and Father, for us that are, can't even imagine or can't even think how we're going to pay our next bill or light bill or rent right now, God, you, you brought us out of that poverty. You brought us out of the guilt of sin. You brought us out of hopelessness and you brought us into hope and love and joy. And Father, I pray that over everyone that's here today. That what seems hopeless and what seems impossible, God, you can do it because you told us to provide for those people, Lord God. I ask you to bless everyone that's here today. Father, change our hearts to be like you. Father, we sacrifice of our own stuff so we can bless others, God, because that's what you did exactly for us when Jesus came and died on the cross for us. So, Father, I pray you change our hearts, not to be selfish or self-seeking, but, God, to give and be your example in the world around us, to love those that are unlovable, to provide for those that need it, God, to do your work, and that you would increase it, Father, for your glory. The grace that you extended to us, God, be the same grace and giving that we can just pour out on people lavishly, those that need it, God. Father, I pray that everyone in this room would be a, a cheerful and happy giver, God. And that we'll be a follower of Jesus and a lover of your people, Lord. I thank you for that, Lord. I pray your blessings over everyone, Father. In Jesus' precious name. And everyone said. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, we're going to, in about 15, 20 minutes, we're going to have our meeting downstairs. So if you're helping in the nursery or helping with the children's ministry, we have a three, four, and five year old group starting uh, on Easter Sunday. So we need help with that group. And then Brad and Crystal need help with the six through 12 year old group. And if you want to work with the babies, God bless you. Uh, we'll be downstairs and tell you all about that. So in about 15 minutes. So if you could help, if somebody can help Tina uh, set up downstairs, I'd appreciate it. Anyway, love you guys. Thank you so much.